I'm Leslie, and I want you to think about a show that you love to watch or a movie that is your favorite, okay? Think about it, because chances are, if you think about why that's your favorite movie or your favorite show, it's not just things like the action or the special effects or the suspense or the setting or the humor. Like, those things are cool, but when we really think about our favorite shows, we love them because we feel like we can relate to them. Like maybe the main character has a friend and it reminds you of your best friend, or maybe he or she is dealing with the same kind of challenges you're facing and you feel like you can connect with every emotion being portrayed. The action or the premise may be unrealistic to your life, but you may feel the tension and the struggles and the drama and that you can 100% relate to all those things. And isn't there something nice about that? When we see a character or a storyline that we feel like gets us and we really connect with it, it makes us feel known, doesn't it? It makes us feel like the main character of the show is someone that I can like even more. In the same way, it's great when we have people that we feel like get us. When we have a friend who laughs at our dumb jokes and quirks when no one else does because they understand us. Or maybe you have friends who can literally finish your sentences or predict what you're going to do next because they know you so well. And that's really cool. Or maybe it's not a friend. Maybe uh, it's a family member. Or maybe it's not just one person. Maybe it's a whole group of people, right? Your friend group or a sports team or a band or a theater group or a youth group or a club or even your small group. See, everyone in the group is uniquely different from each other. Your group is kind of like a prism, right? There are all kinds of unique angles and light. The people in your group aren't like you, but they get you. You see, here's the thing. We're kind of going to take a turn, though, because as great as it is to feel like there are people who get you, isn't it true that for most of us, when we go through really difficult things, we can still feel like we're alone. Like I could tell a friend what's going on and um, maybe that felt a little bit helpful, but it wasn't like they could really take away the pain or go through it for me. See, the rea reality is that like going through tough times feels lonely. Maybe people can relate to our pain, but they can't necessarily go through it for us. And in the midst of tough times, we tend to find ourselves wondering things like, will this ever get better? Why do things have to be so awful? Does anybody care? Or like, am I even strong enough to get through this by myself? The problem is that we will all go through tough times. It's a promise, it's a guarantee. In fact, Jesus himself said this. He said, in this world, you will have trouble. It's painful to hear, right? But it's true. Like if you live on this planet, there's a good chance that you're gonna experience some trouble. And like maybe for you, trouble looks like all of your friends saying that they are busy and then you still see them all posting Snapchats, hanging out together without you, right? Or maybe trouble looks like trying, and I mean like really trying in that one class and still failing. Or maybe it looks like suffering an injury or a sickness, or um, maybe there's someone at school who's extremely rude to you. Listen, I don't have to go through the whole list and I bet it's not that hard for you to come up with something in your own life that feels like trouble. See, we all face trouble. Good stuff happens, yes, but so does bad stuff. And since going through tough times has a tendency to lead us to feelings of loneliness, then we're all gonna have to figure out how to deal with our lonely feelings. And like anything else in life, we can either deal with them in a helpful way or in an unhealthy way. And so in this series, we've been asking questions like, who is Jesus? Why does Jesus even matter when it comes to the real stuff we face, right? These questions definitely have a tendency to show up when we face trouble in life. We wonder like if he really cares, like does he even really get what I'm going through? And if he does, why do I have to go through all of this? You see, when Jesus was on earth, he had plenty of experience with trouble. Take this moment, for example, from this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. Y'all, that's basically just a nice way of saying that Jesus got ditched by people who said that they were on his team. And if you've ever felt lonely, I want you to know that Jesus experienced that too. In fact, he experienced a lot of the same stuff you and I have. I know it's like, well, he's Jesus and that was a long time ago, but really think about it. He was tempted, he was lonely, he was hungry, he was tired, angry, frustrated, sad, so many things. And like, I never really think about Jesus getting his feelings hurt or like hurt by other people. It's like, you're Jesus, hello. Um, but as much as Jesus was fully God, he was also 
fully human, which means he experienced it all. And that's a new light to shine on the prism. When we go through trouble, Jesus gets it. He's been there. And I think that's why he says, in this world, you will have trouble. Like he knew from his own experience that it would be true. But there was more to this statement, which by the way, Jesus was saying this to his closest friends the night that he was being arrested right before he was gonna be killed. One of his friends, John, wrote this down. It's the rest of what Jesus was saying. He said, I have told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. In other words, Jesus hasn't just been there. He's been there and he's conquered it. That means Jesus not only gets how you feel, but he can help you. He can be with you through it. And in the process, he invites us to take heart, which means to find comfort and peace in him. Think of it this way. Jesus is like the most awesome version of an older brother. And I get it, you may not have an older brother and maybe you have an older brother and y'all like just don't get along. That's not Jesus, that's not what we're talking about. Jesus is actually the incredible older brother who gets what it's like to be you. He's there for you at all times, he's strong, and he can actually help you get through your troubling situations, as overwhelming as they may be. So how does Jesus help? Well, in a lot of ways, okay? Sometimes he uses other believers to support us. And sometimes he uses his word to help us find peace and comfort. And sometimes he uses his commandments to help us stay away from trouble in the first place. Sometimes he uses the Holy Spirit in our lives to make us stronger when we're facing tough times. See, the point is he gets what we're going through and he can help. Does that mean everything will always be easy? No, of course not, right? Like, will we never face trouble, never lose a friend, never get hurt? No, but even Jesus experienced that stuff. And so it does mean this. It means that because of Jesus, you are never alone. And I know that can be kind of hard to grasp because like we can't see Jesus as clearly as we want as humans, but if you search for him, I promise you he's there. And that's really important because the only thing worse than feeling hurt, embarrassed, isolated, or anxious is feeling alone in it, right? When we're facing trouble, we all want someone to talk to who can help us find a way out. That's normal. And if you've ever faced trouble before and thought, I wish that someone was here that I could just talk to about this. That's natural. God wired us for community and for relationships. We all have feelings that we need to verbalize out loud. And we probably even have some feelings that we won't even know until we start talking about them out loud. And people are great. Community and friendship are some of God's most incredible inventions. But there will be times when people can't physically be there. There will be moments when you can't get in touch with anyone. There will be times, maybe even when you just feel lonely. But even though, even though we may feel lonely, because of Jesus, we can trust that we're never alone. And I wanna give you a quick visual reminder, okay? And just go with me, I know it's a little bit cheesy, but I kinda just wanna show you this, right? Jesus is like our shadow, right? There are times, depending on how the light moves, that we can maybe barely see our shadow, or there are times when our shadow is easy to see, but maybe we're looking in a different direction. Either way, no matter what, Jesus' promise to never leave us and to always be with us is true. I know it's a simple illustration, but I hope you'll remember that we can trust Jesus and we can trust that we're never alone. So earlier, I asked you to think about an area of your life where you're experiencing trouble. Like maybe it's with your friends at school or sports or family, but as you think about that thing, I want you to first take a deep breath. You're gonna be okay. I wanna challenge you to try three things. Talk to Jesus about your troubles. Sometimes the word pray sounds too spiritual or overwhelming, and so sometimes we don't even wanna try it, I know, but praying is simply just talking to Jesus. So this week, I want you to spend some time talking to Jesus about what's going on in your life. If you don't wanna talk out loud, maybe you can write it down, maybe you can type it in a text, or maybe you can just say it in your mind. Listen, no matter how you pray, just know that Jesus is listening and wants to be there for you no matter what you face. 
Another step you could take is to talk to his people or other believers about your trouble, right? It's powerful when a friend shows up right when you need it. A lot of times, Jesus uses other people to help us overcome what we're facing. That's one of the reasons we want everyone here to have a small group and a leader that you trust. Whenever you're going through something, you don't have to go through it alone. In fact, one of the best things you can do is share with your leader or your group so that they can encourage you, pray for you, and check in with you. No matter how lonely the tough times may feel, you're never really alone. And you may find that Jesus shows up for you in the words of your small group. A third thing you can do is be with others when they hurt. When you and I face trouble, our natural tendency will be to focus only on ourselves and only on our situation and only on our hurt. But when Jesus said that in this world you will have trouble, he meant everyone. That means there's a good chance that someone near you or in your group or in your house is also going through something. And maybe one of the ways Jesus shows up for them is through you. So this week, try checking in on your friends who are going through trouble. Send a text or offer some encouragement or hug them or pray for them. Just help them to see that they are not alone. In high school, it is common to feel like you're alone, like whatever you're facing. Like even if you're in a room full of people, it can feel like nobody gets you. That's why I think knowing who Jesus really is changes everything. As you head out today, I want you to imagine how life would look different if you lived every day as if you were never alone and as if no one else should be alone either. How would it change the way you handle trouble? How would it change the way you treat other people? When you face trouble, because all of us will, Jesus is real. He's the strong, reliable, loving brother towards you. He gets you and he's there for you and he can help you. And because of him, you are never alone.